Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Castor Maritime stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Castor Maritime transports dry bulk cargo, crude oil, and refined petroleum products by vessel across the ocean. Its fleet consisted of nine dry bulk carriers and two tankers with a total cargo carrying capacity of 1 million deadweight tons and an average age of 14.3 years. When you look at the company's 1231-2020 annual report, it mentions it's in the process of purchasing five more vessels and then its fleet will consist of 14 vessels with an aggregate capacity of 1.3 million deadweight tons, consisting of one Cape size, five Camsar Max, and six Panamax dry bulk vessels, also two Aframax tankers, with an average age of 13.5 years. It has acquired more vessels according to a report the company filed on August 5th, so its total fleet size is up to 26, with an average age of 13.2 years and 2.2 million deadweight tons. It was able to get these vessels by raising 262 million of equity and 33 million of debt, the company is headquartered in Cyprus and was founded in 2016. It started trading in 2019 and can be found on the NASDAQ, Norway OTC, and Deutsche Börse. In order to continue trading on the NASDAQ and meet the $1 minimum stock price, the company did a 1 for 10 reverse stock split in May of this year. The supply of ships in the market is highly correlated to the profitability of shipping companies. The cost to maintain the ships is fairly fixed, depending on the age of the ship. The revenue each ship receives can vary a lot depending on the number of ships available in the entire market. There will always be demand by companies looking to transport raw materials or oil. After about 21 years on average a ship gets scrapped. The goal when investing in a company like this is to try to figure out when the total vessels in the market is low because that means the shipping companies will be able to charge more per voyage. When there are too many ships in the market then rates come down a lot and all the shipping companies lose money. This company's average fleet size is 13.2 years, which is higher than the average vessel in the market. Older vessels are usually less fuel efficient and more costly to maintain. Cargo insurance rates also increase with the age of a vessel. As vessels age, market conditions might not justify the added expenses, so scrapping the ship may be the best option. Since steel prices are at an all-time high, then scrapping old ships may make more sense because a scrap value is higher than when steel prices are low. When steel prices come down, then purchasing new ships may be a smart move. Also, when charter rates increase a lot, that is usually when charter companies buy new ships. 18 of the company's 26 ships transport dry bulk cargo. A way to gauge the profitability of this company is to track the Baltic Dry Index. This is an index of average prices paid for the transport of dry bulk materials across more than 20 routes. This index reflects the supply and demand for the industry. In 2007 and 2008, dry bulk shippers were making money hand over fist. As you can tell in this chart, the rates were so high. The prices shipping companies charge has come down a lot in the past several years, but in the past 12 months, the prices have been increasing, which is really good news for this company. So we may see a big surge in this company's stock price if this index keeps rising. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 204 million market cap. They're trading at 218 a share and they have 94 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they did have positive free cash flow in 2018, but negative after that because they kept buying new vessels each year. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That was negative in 2020, but positive 6 million in the trailing 12 months. Revenue is the sales for the company, and that grew 9x from 4 million all the way up to 36 million. So their revenue increased $32 million from 2018. That may not sound like a lot of money, but that's an 800% increase from 2018. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales, 
And you can see that grew a lot from 4 million to 36 million. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. The cost to maintain the ships, the fuel, the insurance, the labor, that's their main cost of revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that grew a lot from 1.6 million to 13 million. Below that is operating expenses. Depreciation is their main operating expense. And they do have positive operating income every year, which is really good. They paid 1.2 million of interest on their debt, and that was the most they paid in a 12 month period. And they're taking on more debt. So their interest expense should be higher in the next income statement. They also pay $245,000 in financing costs. So they do use debt to buy vessels, but sometimes they finance those vessels directly from the company. So if you wanted to buy a car for $10,000, you could go to the bank, get a $10,000 loan, bring that $10,000 and give it to the car manufacturer and they would give you the car. And then you would have to pay the interest and principal payments to the bank. That's the same thing as interest expense for a company. Another way to get the car is to go directly to the car manufacturer and they may be able to sell the car to you using a financing agreement. So you would just pay the car manufacturer the principal and interest payments instead of the bank. It's really the same thing. You're just using debt to buy an asset. So the bottom line of the income statement is their net income which does look pretty good. It was negative in 2020, but it's positive in every other year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates or loses from its operational business. So you could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So that is good. They generated their most operating cash flow in the trailing 12 months, and that should be going up a lot since they have more vessels and rates are increasing. You can see they spend a lot of money in CapEx, 17 million, 35 million, and 290 million. So they spent $290 million in buying vessels the past 12 months. So it's a cash outflow according to the statement of cash flows because statement of cash flows tracks actual cash in and out. But that $290 million goes onto the balance sheet. And then each year, a portion of that $290 million is taken off the balance sheet and passed through as a depreciation expense onto the income statement. So for example, $15 million would be taken off the balance sheet of the $290 million and put onto the income statement each year for about 20 years because you want to spread the cost of the asset over time. So the goal is to spread the cost of the asset over the asset's useful life. So they do have negative free cash flow every year except 2018 because it doesn't look like they bought any vessels that year. So you might look at the trailing 12 months and see this big negative. They leaked over $280 million of cash that year. But I feel the trailing 12 months is much better than 2020 because in 2020 they lost $2.3 million from running their day-to-day -day business because they receive revenue from each voyage and then they have to pay their staff and they have to manage the ships and all the expenses. And at the end of the day, they lost $2.3 million just from running their business. Then they invested another 35 million to buy some vessels. So they actually lost 38 million in 2020. They generated $5.3 million of cash flow from running their business. It's not a huge jump, but it's a positive sign they're moving in the right direction. And they bought so many vessels in 2021, that's why they had a big negative in a trailing 12 months. Even though they did have a big negative in the trailing 12 months, it is a positive sign that they had the highest operating cash flow in a 12 month period. So the company has $310 million of equity. They raised $304 million from selling stock and they generated 6.3 million of profits as a business since they started in 2016. That's not a lot of profits, but it's only been five years. I think it took Amazon about 15 years to have positive retained earnings. So it does take time for a company to start making a lot of money and they've been acquiring a lot of vessels. So I think they are headed in the right direction to start making a lot of profits, but the company is at the mercy of the rates of the overall market. So if the rates come down a lot, they're going to probably lose money because even if it costs them $10,000 for a voyage, they can charge $15,000. If the rates are $8,000 for that voyage, they have to charge $8,000 because their competitor would just go to someone else. You really can't do anything special to stand out in this industry. You just have to get the products from point A to point B. As long as you can do that, then you're in business. It's not like you can have a better product or amazing customer service. The rates are the rates in the market, but the rates have been improving a lot the past 12 months. 
Let's look at the capital structure. They have $310 million of equity, $49 million of debt. They're 86% equity, 14% debt. And their weighted average cost of capital is 8.5%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $769 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $418 million. We divide that by 94 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 446. They're trading at 218, so they're trading at a 51% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. I did a video on this stock back in February, and I valued the company at 487 million, so I'm a little lower now. But now my calculated stock price is 446 at a lower valuation. Back then it was 96 cents. So how could that be? The reason is they did that 1 for 10 reverse stock split. So back in February, they had 509 million shares outstanding. Now they have 94 million. You may be wondering, why don't they have 51 million shares outstanding if they did a 1 for 10 reverse stock split? The reason it's more than 51 million shares outstanding is because they've done some capital raises to bring in some more money to buy ships. So it looks like they added about 43 million shares of stock. And you could see the market cap was $615 million in February. Now it's $204 million. A company can have a $1,000 stock price and another company can have a $50 stock price. But the $1,000 stock price company is a much worse company. They have much lower sales and they're worth a lot less than the $50 stock price. Because if the stock price of $50 had 1 billion shares outstanding, the company's worth $50 billion. If the company with a stock price of $1,000 had 1,000 shares outstanding, the value of that company is only $1 million, much smaller. So just look at market cap if you want to know the value of a company, not the stock price. And you can see the stock has come down a lot since it started trading. And I think actually this chart is wrong because it looks like there was a big uptick right here. And I'll show you in the next chart why that's wrong. So it does appear at this point the stock price went way up. And you could have made a ton of money if you owned a stock down here. But that's not true. They did a 1 for 10 reverse stock split. So if the stock was trading at 30 cents and you own 10 shares, the next day you would own one share at $3. So in either situation, your value of the company would be $3. And so it appears Yahoo Finance hasn't split adjusted their charts yet. This is wrong too in Yahoo Finance. They say the stock has gone up 1200% in the past 52 weeks. It hasn't gone up 1200% because when there's a reverse stock split, the stock doesn't go up 1000%. The valuation stays the same. It's just a number of shares change. This is from Simply Wall Street, and this makes sense. It says the stock price went up 22% in the past year. That I can believe, not 1,200%. But in the past 90 days, the stock has come down a lot. When a company does a reverse stock split, they're doing that so they don't get delisted. But another thing that happens is the stock price goes up a lot, which gives short sellers more opportunity to short the stock. This is a popular stock. 22 million shares are traded on average the past three months. Of the 94 million shares outstanding, 93 million are on float. This 509 million shares outstanding were the total shares before the stock split. 3% of the shares are held by institutions and about 5% are shorted. In the past five years, their annual earnings increased 30%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, it says you'd have $4,400 today. But I think that should be $441 today. Because if you invested $10,000 10 years ago, your $10,000 would have been $20,000 at one point. Then it would have came down really low. It appears at this point, your $10,000 would have been worth about $6,000. But I think once again, they didn't take into account the 1 for 10 reverse stock split. The biggest shareholder owns 1.39% of the company's stock. The founder and CEO owns 0.12% of the stock. Let's look at their financial ratios. Since their market cap has come down so much, and their numbers are improving, their net income is much higher and their revenue is much higher. That gives them much better price multiples than they were in the past. Their PE ratio isn't amazing, but it's much better than it was previously. It's at 33 right now. Their price to sales is pretty good at 5.7. And most companies in this industry have a really good price to book ratio. They're at 0.7. That means the equity on their balance sheet is worth more than their market cap. That's usually not the case. Usually the market cap is worth many times more than the equity on the company's balance sheet. So this company is worth more in bankruptcy than active. If they went bankrupt, they would be able to give each shareholder $3.31, even though each share is trading at 218. They have a low return on invested capital of 1.7%. 
They can cover their interest payments almost five times, a 2% ROE. And they have a high current ratio of 2.5 and a high quick ratio of 2.4. So they have $40 million of cash on their balance sheet as of 630. I know they've been spending a lot of money buying vessels. So this cash balance may be lower as of today, August 13th. But as of 630, it's $40 million. So they did have negative $285 million of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months. That's because they bought so many vessels. They do seem to have enough vessels, so I don't think they'll be buying many more. So their free cash flow over the next 12 months should be a lot higher. Plus they have $31 million of working capital. So they probably will not need more debt or equity to fund their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos on Nordic American tankers, Synergy and Tops. All in the same industry as Castor. And if Castor has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So Castor does have the best PE ratio because two of the four companies have negative earnings and Synergy is 86. Castor does have the worst price to sales ratio, but I think their revenue should go up a lot with their new vessels. All these companies have a really good price to book. They're the best in current ratio, the best in ROE, the lowest in debt, and they're about average in market cap. All these companies are pretty small. Nordic and Tops mainly ship oil. Synergy is dry bulk. Castor is mainly dry bulk and it also does some oil. You can see Castor's average ship age is a little more than Synergy. Castor has 10 more vessels, but a smaller carrying capacity because their vessels are obviously smaller than Synergy's. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 51% discount. If you really like this stock and like this industry, this seems like a great time to buy because the stock price has come down so much. And I'm not sure how much more it could come down unless they go bankrupt. And as long as shipping rates stay where they are or even rise, the stock should go way up. I rank their free cash flow as 1 out of 10, their revenue 5 out of 10, and their ratio is 4 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.